Open only mode. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar presentation. Um, before we get started, we do have a few logistics to cover. Everyone will be muted for the duration of today's presentation, but should you have any questions, please type them into the chat module, and we will be answering them live at the end of the webinar. Also, today's presentation is being recorded and will be distributed within the next 24 hours. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Catherine Smith-Garrett, EPM Live Marketing Manager, and Matthew Willey, EPM Live Product Manager, for today's presentation. Thank you, Morgan, and thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar today. And we will be reviewing EPM Live's new spring product release features and show them live in act action and answer any questions you might have. This new release is our latest milestone in collaboration-based social project management and also delivers new reports, integration, and improved timesheet performance. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. There are many new features and enhancements in our spring release. However, we will review the top 10 key features listed here. We are really excited about these new features and can't wait to show them to you live. Before we get into the live demo first, though, I will uh, spend just a few brief minutes to review each of them with you. The first on our list is social streams. And this feature has been on our wish list for a while now and is something that we are really excited to share with you. And we believe that easy to use social collaboration is the key to success for teams of any size and it really can truly change the way we all interact with our team members and the site content. It's advanced, it brings users together in easy to use real-time collaboration and very importantly it, it fosters a technology, excuse me, a technology driven work environment that closely mimics the social experiences that employees have outside of work. And what's important about that is it engages them in a daily um, project and work management activities within the EPM Live system. The next uh, feature is the Kanban Planner. And Kanban is exciting and it's very popular for a reason. Now, just a little bit of history, the name Kanban originates from Japanese and translates generally as signboard, sign board, excuse me. And the Kanban system was founded in 1947 by an employee at Toyota as a Japanese method of process control. Now, in the context of our world of project and work management, Kanban is a way for teams to visualize their work um, identify and eliminate bottlenecks and organize and complete work. Now we put a great deal of design and development into our Kanban planner so that it allows teams to do just that while letting them interact with the entire project at once while remaining focused on the task at hand. And our Kanban planner streamlines workflow processes using a swim lane layout with Kanban cards and drag and drop functionality and I can't wait for you to see, see the slide. We have new integrations. Our pre-built integrations are tailored to link EPM Live to an organization's other mission critical business systems seamlessly and effortlessly um, and what that does is improve, improves visibility and it eliminates silos of information and these integrations allow users to get instant access to the data they need and mitigating the need to toggle between tools. And we are really proud to include JIRA, Visual Studio, ServiceNow, and Salesforce Desk to our growing list of integrations. Powerful new reports. A great deal of emphasis was put into enhancing our reporting feature with this release. And we have more than 40 new reports created that are specific to portfolios, projects, resources, timesheets, risks, and changes. And we spent quite a bit of time ensuring that each and every report provided maximum value. Now our Upland um, Analytics also got a facelift and it sports all new HTML5 charting cap capabilities and some really impressive animations. We have some new and improved user management. 
with new and improved contextual menus with enhanced forms and filters for a more user-friendly experience and analysis capabilities directly on the report page. And the resources are logically organized at both the enterprise level and at the workspace level. So that provides for optimal efficiency for both project and non-project work assignments. Now the functionality for our forms is so dynamic and we are so proud of ourselves here, we couldn't help ourselves but to call it fancy forms. <laughs> um, there are fields of similar types are grouped together for ease of viewing. Uh, we also limited the number of fields at first glance to a smaller number so users can focus on what's most important and also quickly see associated items with hover um, action capability. So again, fancy forms. Online planner fragments. Have you ever heard of the saying, work smarter, not harder? Um, our new fragments feature fits that bill. Commonly used project planner light items such as tasks and milestones, uh, milestones can be saved as fragments and inserted into any new or existing project at any time. Now the feature saves time by eliminating the repetitive creation of commonly used project line items. Basically you can build your reusable tasks and save them for personal use or you can even share them with the rest of the team. And what project manager doesn't love saving time? And that's what this uh, feature does. Timesheet improvements. Timesheet pages and system architecture have been redesigned for increased performance when saving and improving timesheet submittals and rendering timesheet data. Timesheet, saving your timesheets is now immediate and processing occurs in the background so users can navigate and work in other areas of the system. Now this is where we hear applause all around the world. And the user interface layout has been enhanced for increased navigation, navigation capabilities, make it easier for users to progress between timesheet periods. Again, I'm hearing applause everywhere. We have a new and improved grid. Now this is enhanced to allow user interface for on-the-fly grouping, sorting, filtering, and creating personal views and inline editing and column changes without ever having to leave the grid. And the ribbon has also been enhanced by moving key items into the new and improved toolbar. Templates and apps. This has always been a, a key feature and very popular with EPM Live. We basically, at present, I mean, we offer more than 75 pre-built solution apps and each one of them allows departments and teams the right tools they need to manage any type of work and it optimizes the EPM Live and accelerates the implementation process. We have five new pre-built solution templates that have been added to our portfolio, all created on industry, industry best practices and processes and those are PMO, professional services, marketing, IT management, and agile management. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Willey. He is the EPM Live project manager. And Matt and his team are responsible for the magic of EPM Live and all the hard work and planning of this new spring release. So Matt, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Catherine. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these features and what they actually look like and feel like within the system. So the goal is just to do a quick overview of the different features, show you how they work, some of the different capabilities of each one, um, so you can get a feel for the new features and, and what they can do for you. So the first one that we'll take a look at is the social stream. The social stream um, really allows you to better communicate and collaborate with other people within the organization, especially if you have teams that are spread out in different locations, maybe even different countries, all over the place. It's hard to keep you know, in line with what's going on and keep um, up to date. <clears throat> so anytime something gets created in the system or updated, etc., so for example, I go and I upload a new document and it's or a new version of a, an existing document. In the past, you might want to send an email and let everybody know there's a new version and I can go take a look at that if, if I have a chance. But this is just a lot easier. It requires less work and it's a lot more transparent. So what happens is when I go and I post a new document in here, it shows up in the stream just like all these other different um, 
stream items that you can see here. So it says someone made a comment or someone made an update to a particular project or a backlog item or a document, whatever that might be. And you have links here so you can click on that and link into that actual document or backlog item or whatever it might be if you want to see the details. And if you have any questions, you can comment right on it. So um, someone put a new backlog item here. I take a look at it. I have a question. I can comment right in line. So I can come say, hey, um, will this be fixed soon? And you can type that in. And then I'll just go ahead and hit post. Oops, I got two eyes there. Post. And that's it. I've now posted my comment into the stream. Um, it'll send anybody involved with that backlog item, meaning whoever it's assigned to and whoever created it, it'll send them a notification. That'll pop up in the top right here. But it really just ties into the whole system and gives you insight into what's going on. You can also post items to the stream right from here. So say I have a new issue that I want to post. I just hit the issue <coughs> icon here. <coughs> And that will launch the issue screen so that I can post that particular issue into this, um, you know, into the stream here. So instead of, you know, try thinking of it like I'm putting data into a database, which it could feel like in the past, it just makes it a little bit more collaborative and, and easier to come and post information into the stream so people have visibility into what's going on. <clears throat> So what I do every day when I come in, for example, is I scroll down and I look at everything that happened today, and I can see what's going on, and if anything I'm interested in, I can make comments, et cetera, and really just keep up with whatever's going on. So it's a great new feature. Um, it is permission-based, so you don't just see everything. You only see the things that you have access to see. So if I'm working on three projects, I only see the information for those three projects. And it's something that we're looking on building out more in the future and adding more great capabilities into it. So the next feature that we'll take a look at, and this is one that has generated a lot of excitement. Um, I've got a lot of good feedback from people about this, and um, there's lots of different use cases. So we'll talk about a few of those different use cases and how it can help you manage your work and projects easier. So the Kanban Planner, I'm going to go ahead and launch it here for a particular project, but you can use the Kanban Planner on, on many different things. And in this case, I'm going to be looking at the backlog items for a particular project. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and open up this project here. I know I have some good data to take a look at. We'll go ahead and hit Edit Plan. So as you may know, um, EPM Live has many different planning capabilities, so you can use multiple different tools really to, to manage your projects. You can use Microsoft Project. There's an Agile Planner that allows you to group um, backlog items into iterations. And then there's a, an online project planner that allows you to create waterfall schedules right within the system. But this is a new option, this Kanban planner. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and we'll take a look at what that is. Notice you can use multiple different planners. So for example, if I wanted to um, use a Kanban board to track the actual task statuses, but I still wanted to build my, you know, my regular schedule and a waterfall schedule, that's completely fine. I could come in here, I could look at everybody's active work. <clears throat> you can do things like filter by priority. I just want to see all the high priority or the normal priority items. Um, and then you can come through and just simply drag and drop. So as people complete things, um, and I can also see where bottlenecks are. For example, if there's a, a lot of work that's in progress here, then I know that there's a problem here, right? Why aren't we completing items? But it's as simple as just drag and drop as things complete. So I meet with my team and I say, okay, we completed these three items. I just drag and drop them here into completed. And it updates the status on the back for me. And then when I go back into my, my full project schedule, it'll have updated the status there for me as well. So it's just a, a really quick way of visually seeing um, the work that's going on and where you have potential problems. And then makes it really easy to drag and drop and move things around. Now we can talk about some other use cases as well. Instead of having my swim lanes here being uh, statuses, maybe these could be priorities, low priority, medium priority, high priority. And I could just drag and drop the items to prioritize them into the different buckets is, a, is another use case that you could do here. These could be projects. Um, and I could be looking at all the projects for a specific portfolio. And I could drag my projects from one lifecycle stage into the next, especially if you have a, a stage gate process. This could be a really nice visual, easy way to see what projects were in which stage gate. And then you could easily move them on to the next stage gate as they complete and you know, get all the deliverables together that they need to. <coughs> so there's lots of different use cases. It's, it's configurable, so you can really set it up in any way you want. You can pick what you want the swim lanes to be. And you can pick what data you're showing in here, whether it's projects or backlog items or issues or tasks or whatever it might be. 
So it's a really great feature. Um, we definitely plan on working on it more, adding things like color coding and, and all kinds of cool things that you can do with Kanbans um, to, to give it a little bit more information. But as a first phase, it's definitely something that we're proud of and people have been using and we've been getting a lot of great feedback. <coughs> So the next thing that we'll take a look at is our improved Grid Gantt web part. So what is a Grid Gantt web part? Well, it's basically the, the tool that you use to view data within the system. So for example, if I click on projects here, and I see all of this data here, you know, all of my different projects, and I see some KPI indicators and such, what's actually showing this data is our Grid Gantt web part. <clears throat> so it's a, a web part that sits on the page here and allows us to see that data. So you may, if you've used the product in the past, you may notice, number one, visually it looks um, a lot nicer. But on the back end, there's a lot of improvements as well. So there's performance improvements here um, that are going to load uh, large amounts of data much quicker. There's paging. Um, so for example, if I go to a list that has a lot of data, like for example, our task lists, um, you'll see our paging pop up here <coughs> so that I can page through the different data. Um, and I can see everything that's going on. I'll have to switch here to a all tasks kind of view. And I can switch and see all of the different data. So I'm loading you know, thousands of items here that I can then page through. <coughs> and so you have paging options up here in the ribbon that are going to allow you to change and switch through those different options there and, and go see all the different data. Now, one of my favorite features here, though, is the ability to change the view on the fly without having to be an administrator. <clears throat> so, for example, I'm looking at my list of tasks here, and there's another piece of information that I need. There's another column of data that I want to add in here into this particular um, view. Instead of having to call my administrator or send him an email, him or her an email and say, hey, can you add this extra view or field to this view or create me my own view? I can come here and I can simply say select columns. <clears throat> and let's say I want to see the actual cost or the actual start or whatever it might be or both of them. I can simply select those, hit apply, and it'll refresh here and it's going to add those two fields onto the end for me. So I can now scroll over to the right and here's my actual cost for all these tasks and my actual start for all these tasks. <clears throat> so it makes it really quick and really easy to be able to add fields. As well as, let's say, I want to change the way I'm grouping. Right now I'm grouping by project, right? So these are all my different projects, and if I expand into them, I can start to see the hierarchy of tasks within these particular projects. But maybe I don't want to group by project. Maybe I want to group by status. So I can come in here and change project instead to status, hit apply, <coughs> And it's going to update, and it's going to show me all these tasks now grouped by status. So I can see here's all my in-progress tasks, and here's all my completed tasks, et cetera. So it makes it really easy, really quick. There's also improved filtering, so I can say, you know, I only want to see um, uh, items where timesheet is checked is equal to yes. So I just check it, and now it's only showing my timesheet items. I can uncheck it, and it's not. Um, you know, if I want to come over start date, I can say where start date is equal to a specific date. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes it really quick and really easy to filter, as well as this capability was there before, but there's a, a search capability. So if I want to search for a specific task name or for task for a specific project or whatever it might be, I can come use my search capabilities here and type those in and, and search and filter for them. So the, the new grid again is really a, a usability feature. It just allows you to get to the data and, and see what you want to see within the system a lot quicker on the fly without having to go through an administrator and submit a formal request, those types of things. Now you can lock it down so that people can't add certain fields into here, et cetera, if there's you know kind of confidential data. And this is all still permission based, so you only see tasks in here that you have access to. But it's a really great feature. It's almost a, a reporting feature in a way because it really allows you to almost create your own reports on the fly right here in the views and see the data that you need to see. And when you're ready, you can even then come and you can export that out to Excel um, if you wanted to, to get that data out of the system, or you could print it to PDF, whatever it might be. Cool. So um, without spending too much time, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to resources. We've also redone our resource grid, which is basically the same thing as the, the grid Gantt web part that we just looked at, except it's specifically focused on resources. So it has some different capabilities within it than, <coughs> than the particular the, the grid Gantt web part has. 
So for example, I have some extra tools in here that I can open up for these particular resources, resource planner, assignment planner. Um, there's different reports. I can send notifications, etc. But you can see it has the same controls over here on the right side. So you can do all the same things in your resource pool as you might do in projects or tasks or issues or any of these other different um, work types and such that we store within the system. So with that, the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the fancy forms. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to task center here, <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and take a look at a fancy form. So in the past, what would happen when you clicked on a particular item and you opened up what was called the, the display form or the view form for that item, and it gave you basically all the details about that item. Um, well, the problem was in certain lists like projects and tasks and many of the different lists, there's a lot of different data fields that are in there and it makes it a little bit hard to look at because it would line them all up from top to bottom and you'd have to kind of scroll down to see all the different fields. So it, it made it really hard just to get some quick information out of a particular task, for example. So now what will happen if I go ahead and click on this particular task here, <coughs> it's going to open up this fancy form and it organizes all of those pieces of data into specific categories that make it a lot easier for me to view. So uh, first of all, I have my quick details here, things like status indicators and the project that it's related to, et cetera. If I'm interested in people, you know, like who's it assigned to, for example, it's going to show all my people groups here. If there was an owner field or an executive sponsor field or any other people pickers that you might have, they would all automatically group into this section here for me. Here's all my dates and then any narrative details like descriptions and notes and such. Really cool though, if you don't have dates, for example, that whole section will disappear. Or if you didn't have any people picker fields in your view, that whole section will disappear. So the form will actually update and, and really you know, collapse itself depending on what data that you have here. As well as if I have a lot of different fields, it doesn't show them all all at once. I can hit the show button here and I can see a lot more other, you know, other data here if I need to see all of those details. But for the most part, I'm probably just going to need some of this here. So it just makes it a lot clicker, or quicker, cleaner, easier to see that data and get to it. So it's another really big usability and performance. Um, also, it's a lot faster. This form here just pops up instantaneously, um, whereas the other one took a little bit to load all the different fields on the page. So the next feature is one that people have been asking for for a while, and that is our fragments feature. So this has to do with project planning. So the use case is I'm going and I'm building my project schedule, <clears throat> and when I very first start on my project schedule, um, I can start from a, a template. We've had that capability for a while. So if I had a, a template with a basic structure in it or something like that, so I don't have to start from a blank schedule, I can start from that. But the new feature is going to allow me then, once I've already started planning, maybe there's some other fragments of other schedules that I want to copy into this schedule so I don't have to go rebuild them again every time. I can save all these little fragments and build up a nice library of different fragments that I might use from time to time. And, you know, a fragment is just a, a small piece of a schedule, right? Maybe one milestone with some subtasks under it or, or something like that. It can really be whatever you want it to be. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I can do is I already have a project schedule here. And let's say I need to add, um, you know, another section in. And this is a section that I've already built and I've already saved into my fragments um, library. I can come in here under project, and here's my fragments tab. And notice I'll have options here to insert fragments, save fragments, manage fragments, etc. So let's say I want to insert one into this schedule. All I do is I hit insert, <coughs> and it'll show me a list of the different fragments that I have available um, to me. And this is permission based as well. You can create public or private fragments. And so I can choose, and I can say, okay, um, I need my SDLC fragment here, and I can grab that, and I'll go ahead and insert that in and say okay. And it's going to go ahead and take that fragment and plop it right into my schedule, and then I can drag and drop it to the right location. <clears throat> so it says fragment successfully imported, and if I go down to the bottom, it added this whole whole another section in here of all these different tasks. But like I said, these fragments can be anything you want. So you could have, you know, I could break this out and have a fragment for post-deployment and a fragment specifically for deployment, et cetera, et cetera, planning. Um, and it just really makes it quick and easy to drop those in. You can even save assigned twos in your fragments. So if the same people are always working on those tasks, 
you can save that in your fragment. And when you import it in, if they're not in your team for your project, it'll automatically put them in the team for you. So that's a really nice capability that a lot of people have uh, liked and just makes it a lot easier to, to plan and build your schedule. <coughs> so we're really excited about that. Um, it, you know, it definitely saves time. It's a, it's a great usability feature. Um, and it allows you just to, to quickly get in, build your project schedules without having to reinvent things that you've done in the past. The next feature that we'll take a look at is timesheets. <clears throat> so um, I will say we've made a lot of improvements in performance of timesheets. So what is that? Um, things like saving and submitting your timesheet are now much faster. Um, the the timesheet manager view, if you're a timesheet manager and you're viewing, you know, say hundreds of timesheets for many different people or even thousands of timesheets for many different people, it's a ton quicker to load those. Um, and be able to then go in and just automatically approve everyone. It, it, it's just a, a lot, a lot faster. But you can see the look and feel is a little bit different as well. It's been a little bit more modernized and kind of more fits the style of the system. So that was something that we, we definitely put some effort into. Um, but I can come in and I can fill out my timesheet hours. It's very quick. It's very easy. And then I can save and submit these things. Uh, I'll go ahead and submit it here. And notice that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Once I save and submit it, um, it goes into a queue. It does process a lot faster than it used to. Um, but if I then go to my timesheet manager approval view, I'll see it over there as well. <clears throat> so I can switch to that if I'm more of a, a manager. And I'll see all my different timesheets here. And it loads those up very quickly. Even if I have, like I said, hundreds of people that I'm approving, um, I can do that. I can see now Steve Masters has submitted his time. And here's those eight hours that we just submitted. I come in here and I hit approve and instantaneously it approves and we're done, we're ready to go. If I find out I need to come back and, and unlock that and let them make any changes, I can come back and say unlock, it instantaneously unlocks it. So everything's just a, a lot faster, a lot nicer than it was before. There's some cool new filters that you can do here too, so I can say like, I just wanna view all of my unsubmitted timesheets. So here are all the people that have not submitted their timesheets yet. Just view all of my unapproved timesheets. So I have one particular timesheet in here that's been submitted but not approved yet. Remember, because I unlocked it. So it's some, some nice capabilities as well as you can then email people. So if I want to email Steve and say, hey, what's going on? Um, I can do that and I can put in a little subject in a body and then send the email right from the system. So some nice usability improvements in here as well. So we're really happy about it. Um, we, you know, we always try to keep the timesheets very simple, very straightforward, so it makes it you know, quick and easy to get your time in and go and approve people's timesheets because no one wants to sit around all day trying to, to work on their timesheet. <laughs> so we try to keep it really simple, but we think that, that it's a lot quicker, a lot simpler, and people will be able to use the system a lot better. So the next thing to talk about is integrations. <clears throat> So we've came out with um, multiple new integrations. So our list is ever growing and we'll be building more integrations here in the future. We have two full-time people now that will just be dedicated to building integrations. So you'll see very rapidly the, the list um, increasing in all of the previous or the next releases that'll be coming out. But some of the main ones in this particular release, um, well, one of the main ones in general that's been generating a lot of interest was the JIRA integration. So let's talk a little bit about what the JIRA integration is, or just the general concept of integrations in general. So what we've done is we've built these integrations that allow you to integrate with other systems, and you don't have to write any code. It's all just configuration. You just go through some simple pages to set it up. So for example, let's say I, I wanted to bring in issues from JIRA into EPM Live. Now first of all, why would I do that? What's the use case? Well. A lot of people use different systems to manage different types of work. So maybe my service requests or my help desk tickets are in one system, and my issues are in another system, and I'm managing my projects and tasks in EPM Live. I don't really have one place to go to see what everyone's working on, right? The, the data is all separated. So a good use case for an integration is to bring all that data into one place so that I can then run reports and do resources analysis and see what people are working on and really you know bring all that data together <clears throat> so we make it as simple as you go into for example the issues list in EPM live and I want to bring in those issues from JIRA and I click on integration here <clears throat> and it'll open up a new window that allows me to add a new integration and I can actually add multiple integrations to a particular list so maybe I want to sync these issues from JIRA to EPM Live and then from EPM Live into Salesforce so that our sales team for example had access um, to those particular issues and visibility into them as well. 
So you just come in and you pick which integration you want to do. So you can see here Salesforce, Office 365, Jira. So if I wanted to do Jira, I just hit configure. And then I would go through a series of screens that are going to basically ask me questions of how I want it to work. So the first thing I have to do is give it the, the URL for my Jira site, the username and the password. Then I'd hit next and it would ask me, you know, if I delete an item in Jira, do I want it to delete in EPM Live? If I delete an item in EPM Live, do I want it to delete in Jira? You know, a series of questions like that. Then you do a field mapping, so you say, okay, the description field in EPM Live is going to go to the, the notes field in Jira. Maybe they don't quite have the same title, so you can do a field mapping. And you hit finish and that's it. You've then set up a particular integration for your system. So it makes it very easy then to manage the integration as well later on. So say if you have a new custom field that you added to both systems and you want to start syncing that field back and forth, you know, maybe we started tracking costs and we want to send that cost in the EPM Live from, from Jira that we're tracking. <clears throat> You would simply go back into that integration, hit manage, and just map that new field. It'll show up there. So you don't have to talk to any developers, right? You don't have to, to make a request to IT or whatever it might be. Anybody with administrator privileges within the site would be able to, to go make that change within a few seconds. So it's a really cool feature um, that allows you to connect to other other systems, and really we're just adding onto that list all the time of all the different systems that we can connect to out of the box. Now, if there's a system that you want to connect to that's not currently in our list, we do have a generic integration available. We call it a generic integration, and that'll allow you to connect to any other system um, that has APIs and a web service available that we can connect to, to to get the data out and send it back and forth. So that definitely helps as well get you most of the way there if there's a system that we don't have in our list. But we're always open to suggestions, so feel free to, to reach out to us and let us know if there's any integrations in particular that would be useful to you. We keep that in mind and we try to you know, create out-of-the-box integrations for the ones that customers are frequently asking for. Cool, cool. So um, the next thing that we'll take a look at real quick here, and we won't look at all of them, uh, but there's some new um, applications or site template solutions that we have created um, that allow you when you're, you're going and you're starting fresh to start from this new site template and, and get all these capabilities already out of the box without having to go and install apps and add workflows and, and do things like that. So for example, um, we've redone our IT solution and we've kind of streamlined it a little bit more um, and, and, re and modernized it and we have it using all the new features, added some workflows, added some new reports, etc. cetera. Um, and we'll take a quick look at that. So instead of, this was our, our project management use case here, we have projects and we have specific apps that are installed here. Notice if I go to the IT management, I have some different sections here. I have a, a service desk section with service requests and a service catalog and a knowledge base, etc. I have an application section where I can then track all my applications and backlog items related to those applications, et cetera. And without going into too much detail, the goal here is just to have um, a new template that I can start from that will have all of these pre-configured apps and workflows and reports and such all ready for me to go so I can just start out of the box and really you know, meet the needs of my IT department. I might need to do some tweaking here and maybe change a few things or maybe we're not doing risks, I can remove that. But it definitely gives you a, a great place to start from and get these capabilities out of the box. <clears throat> so that's something that we'll continue to work on as well. Um, we'll be releasing new ones, we'll be making improvements to existing templates, we'll be adding more reports, for example, under the help desk section here. Those are kind of continuous improvements that we'll be making to these templates and apps over time. So the last thing that I'd like to, to look at that we didn't take a look at yet were some of the new reports. So in this last release, we put out a ton of new reports, over 40 or so reports, using our Upland Analytics tool. If you're not familiar with Upland Analytics, this was a tool that was released in our last major release, I think last November, and it really allows you um, to, to get the data out of the system that you need to get without having to be a super technical developer is, is the goal. So. Um, we've created a lot of out-of-the-box reports so that you can get to things that you want to get to without having to do any work. For example, um, let's say I want to go and see some reports about projects and I'm looking for uh, some details about my particular costs and benefits and such. I can go ahead and open up my report here and you'll see that I have <clears throat> um, my budget, some actual costs, and you know it's a really nice report here that gives me a trend over time of how those costs and budgets have changed and if I'm on track or if I'm going over, et cetera, et cetera. 
So it makes it a lot easier for me to, to view those reports and, and get the data out of the system I need to get. It's really cool too, for example, um, it's, it's pivoting here by a particular, um, you know, it's pivoting by month is really what it's doing, but it's showing the months by number. So month three, month four, month five, month six, et cetera. If I want to change that on the fly without having to, to, you know, go change a query or do anything crazy like that or create a new calculated field, I just come in here and say instead of grouping by year and month, I want to group, let's say, by day of the week or by year or maybe I'm interested in quarter. So I can come in and I can choose quarter, hit update results, and then as I scroll down here, you'll now see that it's you know, pivoting all of this data here by quarter. So it makes it really cool and really easy to, to get the data out of the system. I won't go and show all the reports, but the major categories that we added reports in, um, we definitely added a lot more project reports, especially for costs and such. We added a resource reports, timesheet reports, status reports, um, et cetera. There's a, a ton more reports in here that you can have out of the box. But if you want to use Upland Analytics to create your own reports, you can definitely do that as well. You can create new reports and new dashboards um, that are really nice, and, and it's very, very quick and very easy to do that. Uh, you know, with a, a small learning curve, you just have to get an idea for what data is where, that kind of a thing. Once you got that, then you're, you're ready to rock and start creating your own reports without having to, to be a developer of any sort. Cool. cool. So those are the, the main features um, that were released in this. So there, were, there was a lot of small improvements and kind of behind the scenes performance increases, et cetera, um, things that we've cleaned up, made easier. Um, there's you know, a, a lot of little stuff that goes into these releases, but those are definitely the main big features. So I appreciate all of your time and thank you all for coming out today. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Catherine so that she can give you some information, um, and contact information, and et cetera, so that uh, we'll be able to go ahead and close this off. So again, I thank you for your time. Okay, great. So while um, Catherine is pulling up her slide, uh, Matthew, we do have a couple questions actually that came in um, during your presentation. Um, so if we could go ahead and answer some of those questions before we go ahead and close out the webinar. Sounds good. Okay, great. All right, so we will start with um, the first question. It's a, it's a scheduling question, um, and it is, would that require creating two separate schedules, one for a regular project and one for a Kanban planner? That's a good question. Um, so technically, it's, it's the same schedule. You're just viewing it differently is the best way. So the process would be I'd go in probably, and I would use the regular project planner or the agile planner, depending on which, which method I'm using. And I'd build out my schedule, which would then create all of those tasks or work items, right, or backlog items, whatever it might be, depending on what I'm doing. And once you have all those items, then you can open up the Kanban planner, and all of those are just going to be there, right, all those tasks. And they'll be grouped into the different statuses or priorities or however you set up your Kanban planner. And from there, you can then just drag and drop and move them from one status to the next. And that would then feed back into your project schedule. So when you now go and open up your project planner, all of the statuses would be updated based on what you did in the Kanban planner. So you can really use them in conjunction. You're not building two separate plans. It's really just a different way to look at your plan and a different capability that you can have over it. Great. Thanks, Matthew. Um, and just a reminder, anybody, if you have some questions, please go ahead and, and type them into the, uh, the questions module, and Matthew will answer them right now for you. Okay, so moving on to the next question, Matthew, I know you were demoing in um, 2013, but are any of these updates available in 2010? That's a great question. Um, some of them are, for example, the Upland Analytics reports. Those are available in 2010, um, and some of them are not. So 2013 definitely is you know, where our main focus is um, going forward. We're putting most of our effort into our 2013. And when I say 2013, it it's means EPM Live that's supported on SharePoint 2013. We also have an EPM Live version that's supported on SharePoint 2010. So it's, it's, it's kind of half and half. Some of the things are supported in 2010 and some of them are not currently. But just going forward, our main focus will be on 2013. Okay, great, thank you. Um, next question, any plans for um, Service Desk 7.5 integration? That's a good question. Um, 
it's something that um, I have heard that other people were using. Um, we haven't started working on it yet, but I will definitely make sure that that's in the list, and, and I do appreciate people's feedback on that. So um, we will definitely get that in the list and make sure that that's something that we're planning for the future. Great, great. Um, let's see here. I'm going to move on to this next question here. Is the Kanban planner compatible with Microsoft Project, or can we just use EPM's planner? It's compatible with Microsoft Project as well. So if you wanted to build your initial schedule with Project and then publish that into EPM Live and then open up that schedule in the Kanban planner, that would be perfectly fine. The, the use case would be the same. It is compatible with, with both tools. Great, great, thanks. And then, um, let's see, one of the last questions here, uh, when will this be rolled out, especially for dedicated server customers? Ah, so 5.6, uh, which is the version we're looking at here, our, our spring release, um, was already rolled out onto our shared environments. So if you're on our Apps 22 environment, that's already there. Um, there is an opt-in upgrade process for you to, to get access to some of these other features and, and you know, for example, to turn on the social stream and, and things like that. Um, so if you go to support.epmlive.com, you can check out, um, and then at the very bottom of the screen there's a, a place called upgrades, and you can do that on your own or you can contact whoever you normally work with and they'll be able to help you do that upgrade. If you are on site or on premise, the installer is ready, so you have to first um, upgrade by installing the new installer into your system and then from there it's the same process of you, you go and you basically click a button which will allow you to opt into a lot of these new features and there's a few extra steps after that. All in all though it's a, it's a very simple straightforward process and it doesn't take too much effort. It's literally maybe uh, you know a couple hours or so that kind of thing. Great. Great, we did have a few more questions that just came in actually as well. Nope. Um, so um, is it possible to get a list of all of the new reports? That's a good question. Yes, I, um, our training and documentation department just put together that list of all the new reports and they'll be posting it up on our support sites here very soon. Um, so that's something that you'll, you'll have to keep an eye out for. But if you have any questions, feel free to, to email us and we can send you that direct link. Great. Okay, another question. Um, same on Microsoft Project, all tasks brought into the Kanban, or can you pick summary level tasks? That's a great question. Um, you can put different filters on the Kanban board. So, for example, the filter I had set up was priority, um, but I could have very easily set up my filter instead to be, um, you know, based on summary or not. So there's a, a yes-no flag basically in the system that tells if it's a summary task or not. So you'd be able to set that up as your filter and you'd be able to switch back and forth and just focus on summary tasks or just focus on the actual children tasks themselves as well. Okay, great. And then part two of that question is um, also is that like along with the code, the logic for reports? Um, can you repeat that? I didn't quite hear the last thing you said, sorry. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. So um, the second part of that question is um, also like along with the code and the logic for reports, bring that with the Microsoft project for the Kanban. Oh, for sure. Yeah, anything that you do in there, is gonna, it's going to update the, the data back in the system. So any reports that you ran would, would you know, show accordingly. So for example, if you change 10 different statuses and now you go run your work status report, you would see those statuses uh, changed in that particular report as well. Great, thank you. Um, another question, are fancy forms configurable or does it arrange the fields by data type? Ah, it does arrange them by data type, but they are somewhat configurable. You can update the order of the fields. So um, if you go into the, the particular list settings and you update the order of those fields, it will update the order within the fancy form for you as well as uh, we have a feature called Manage Editable Fields that's been around for a while, which allows you to hide certain fields, um, you know, on the edit form or on the view form or whatever, you know, it might be. And you can use that still to, to hide or remove fields from that particular form. As far as the sections are concerned, they are not configurable. We do have another tool that we released uh, November of last year, our, our 5.5 release, called Designer Forms, which allows you to completely configure the forms and you know, really do anything you want. But with that comes some overhead and some management, right? When you want to add a new field, you have to open up the form designer and put it in the right place. Um, you know, it's, it's not a lot of management, but the, the goal of the fancy forms really for it just to work kind of on its own. Whereas the designer forms, if you want to do something more custom exactly how you want it, then you can use that for that use case. 
Great, great. And then last question here. Um, do we have any documentation for the JIRA integrations? I'm sure that's probably in our training documents, but... Yeah, we have some general integration documentation that tells you how to set them up and go through the different screens. And really, each integration is, is set up the same as the others. Um, there's, there's very little differences between the two, so we definitely have um, documentation on that. Currently, I don't believe the, the specific JIRA documentation is done yet, um, but that is something that is in the works and will be releasing soon. Great. Oh, got one more that snuck in here. <laughs> um, with the out-of-box reports, can you integrate different reports to create an executive level summary? For sure. Um, there's a dashboard feature within Upland Analytics, and what you do is you just create all the different reports you want, or if they're all the reports that you want already exist, then great. And then you go create a new dashboard and you basically select which report you want in which area. So up in the top left of my dashboard, I want project budget. And in the, you know, the, the top right, I want whatever report, you know, resource capacity or whatever it might be. So you just select all those different reports and you can put together a nice executive dashboard very quickly. Um, as well as there's some already out of the box for you as well. Great. Great. Thanks so much, Matthew. That does it for, um, for the questions that we've had so far today. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Catherine. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Morgan, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, I, do, I am showing um, all of the information so that you can get in touch with us. Uh, I have our website URL up there, and then you can also get in touch with us via email. I have our phone number. And then down in the bottom right-hand corner, if you wanted to contact me directly, you most certainly can. I have my email and my phone number and extension. And again, I want to thank you all for attending. I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation. We're able to get out of it all of the new features and how they work. And um, we hope to hear from you. And thank you so much. <laughs>